Hello everybody, this is William McCullum 700 McCullum Small Engines. In today's video we are going over the John Deere LA150. So this tractor my dad bought brand new in 2007. It's powered by a 25, not 25, 26 horsepower Briggs & Stratton ELS Extended Life Series. I'm going to go over what it has. Also I'm going to go over the issues these engines are known for. These engines have full pressure lubrication, overhead valves, which is obvious because it says overhead valve on the valve cover, and it also shows a valve cover. I must add that. So, those are the two features that make this engine stand out from single cylinder engines that are throwaway. So, this engine is known for issues. They're known for head problems where the push rods bend because the valve guides move because they overheat easily. They also have camshaft issues. The camshaft lobes are known to wear out. And the carburetors are known to pl plug up too easy because they have tiny, tiny jets on the carburetor. The jets on the carburetor are tiny. And if you run a crappy, cheap fuel filter, either the media from the filter or dirt is going to get in and plug the carburetor up. And you don't want that. And the valve cover isn't on the leak because they warp and also the gaskets give way. So there may be more issues of these engines, but I'll tell you the things I do like about this engine is that it's efficient on fuel, it's quiet, it's got a spin on oil filter, which is what you should always look at when buying an engine, especially a V-twin, is a spin on oil filter. Do I advise these engines? No, I don't. Unless it's the Vanguard, then I would suggest the Vanguard. I do advise Kohler, particularly the Commands, and the Kawasaki's are good too. I like Kawasaki engines, Kohler Commands, strictly the Kohler Commands, and the Vanguard engines, and Honda. Those are brand, four brands I advise. The 7000 series, that's just up to you, but I wouldn't get one. For me, it's Kohler's Command, Kawasaki, or Vanguard, or Honda. So, those are the engines I advise on a lawnmower. So, that's pretty cool that they have an engine that is pretty advanced in its time. Kohler commands are ahead of the game, but this is an advanced engine. In a way, compared to a single cylinder with none of these features. So, it's got... Auto light spark plugs in it. You can run Auto light. You can run AC Delco. You can run Champion NGK. I'm sure Bosch even has spark plugs for these engines. So you can run good spark plugs and it'll last a long time. Now I must say, these engines are reliable. If you do one thing, take care of them. If you take care of them, like change the spark plugs, air filter, oil filter, sea foam the engine change the oil, oil filters, do any maintenance related tasks, clean the cooling system out, this engine would be a good engine if you take care of it. There's a lot of engines out there that are that way. I know GM's uh, Vortec engines that way because we know this because we haven't we had an Isuzu Ascender and it had a lot of problems. So they went on for a lot of issues. So let's go over the issues with the let's go over the issues of the wheels. These wheels are known to wobble over time because of the material. I'm guessing what material they use. If you see, you can tell there's a lot of wear trends here. As you can see it's scratched because it eventually will wear the wheel bushings out, and you got to replace them. I wish Deere had used ball bearings on these because they would last a heck of a lot longer and these would not even be on this trailer here. So, and the tires are kind of cheap on them, they're on the dry rot, which any tire is going to dry rot anyway, you can't stop that. Even the big 18 wheelers, their tires dry rot over time. So, I got, I, yeah I know I got a fix this wheel that's what it's over here for is to fix that wheel so let's go over the deck in the middle of the tractor where the controls are located 
just close the hood. Say goodbye, Andrew. <laughs> so, it's got a cargo net here on this side. It's got your parking brake, your throttle, your choke, your reverse switch to bypass the to to bypass the backwards uh, mowing switch where you can mow in reverse. It's got your it's got your electric PTO. And it's got your parking brake. Well, not parking brake. It's got your cruise control. Couldn't get the word out. Cruise control. It's got your hydrostatic transmission. So. Now let's go over the deck and their issues. The decks are known for their pulleys to wear out. Their pulleys are known to wear out on them. Which is a really common issue on these John Deere's. They will wear an egg shape in the in the in the deck pulleys because of the material they're using you know they also are known for their bearings to lock up because they remove the because they're known to remove the um forget excuse me they're known to forget to remove the they're known to forget removing the inside seal where it faces the inside of the bearing, not bearing the spindle. So that's an issue with these. And of course it causes the spindles to lock up. But it does keep the shaft cool. So if you don't, if, so if you want to keep this part off, if you, if you want to keep this part on, don't even bother adding that. Just pack it with grease when it's out of the plant. That's plant obsolence. I do not like plant obsolence at all. I don't trust that crap. Alright. So. Sorry about that. Um, so this is what they're known for. Their spindles are known to wear out. Because I do not like plant obsolence. As I was saying, I do not trust plant obsolence. I don't trust any claims. That claim crap that's gonna if you believe it's gonna cause problems such as Briggs and Stratton's just checking ad it's gonna cause problems so that's an issue if it says just check an ad and never change your oil don't believe that change your oil same deal if it says no need to grease just find a way to grease it that's what that is that's what I mean so that's how the decks are So, now, let's go back over the, the transmission. It's got a K46 Tough Torque, which they're decent. Not ideal for heavy, continuous pulling, but they can handle continuous mowing, but they're not meant for heavy pulling. They can pull like a dump cart or a trailer like that, but a 16-foot trailer, no, 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 not at all. That's what they're known for. <laughs> so... It's got a two and a half gallon fuel tank, if I'm not mistaken. It's got a two and a half gallon fuel tank. It's got reflectors on it. And it's got lumbar support on it. It's also got a phone charger. So, it's got plenty of storage. It's got the cargo mount system, which I think Husqvarna has too. I think Husqvarna has that design too. So, that's what that is. So, I guess I have a Cub Cadet tire on it. Some of y'all say, that's sacrilege. Well, guess what? It works. It's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. So, that's what I have to say on that. So, it's pretty much a cool machine that makes others stand out. So, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching. Bye. See y'all in the next video.